Hey guys, Brian Castro here from Better Chest Training, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing part one of a three-part review of the woodpecker method on the chessable platform. Okay, here we are on the uh, woodpecker homepage, and uh, this is by, it's a tactics course uh, by Grandmasters Axel Smith and Hans Tikkanen, and uh, I read the introduction and Grandmaster Tikkanen, uh, in around 2010, he felt that his, I think he was an international master at the time, he felt that his uh, tactics and his uh, tactical vision was not up to par. And now, mind you, he's already an international master and a chess professional. Um, and so he put himself through a rigorous training program where he took a set of about a thousand problems and uh, went through them uh, and he actually it's quite impressive yeah I think he and of course he's a chess professional so this is what he has to do uh, he, he treated it like a work day did eight hours of tactics now uh, I don't expect you to all do that but the idea here is that each of these problems um, are progressive and there's a repetitive nature to them so that it really drills these patterns into your head and we've seen this before I've discussed uh, similar types of methods, including uh, Michael Delamaza, his concept of the seven circles, where you repeat a set of tactics problems seven times. And uh, actually, actually um, the authors mentioned that in the book as well. So uh, let's take a quick look at the chapters. And in this first uh, part, I'm actually going to start solving some of the problems. And so if I look at the chapters here, uh, we've got our introduction. You see our, I've already looked at some of this. Uh, summary of tactical motifs, uh, instructions, just kind of gives you suggestions. Now, here he suggests a similar method to what uh, Delamaza uh, suggests, which is to go through them over a few weeks and then do a, a second set of them uh, in a faster period, uh, uh, cutting the time in half and doing it several times until you can do all the problems in a single day. Um, with the Chessable platform, now you can do this uh, here on Chessable, but I actually like uh, and believe in the Chessable method, which is to use spaced repetition. So whenever you do the problems, uh, the next day or, or when it feels that it is the best time for you, it's going to bring those positions back up, and then you are going to be able to review them again. But let's go ahead and let me go through the rest of these chapters. Uh, easy exercises. Intermediate exercises, intermediate exercises two, intermediate exercises three, and advanced exercises. So these chapters are organized in uh, order of difficulty. So it's starting with easy and eventually going to advanced, which, uh, as I've mentioned in other videos, I think is a great way to learn tactics initially. And then after you do something like this, then to uh, use random problems uh, using one of the chess servers. So that uh, is my suggestion. So part of this review will be um, assessing the selection of the problems as well as the ordering of the problems and seeing how appropriate that is, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, start solving some problems. Okay, uh, here is actually problem number two in the set, and it's in the chapter uh, Easy Problems. And I, what I like so far uh, from the introduction is that it's going to be a progressive set of problems. So let's take a look at this. Uh, we'll have a little chess lesson out of it, and let's see what we have here. Um, it's white to play, and uh, we have, uh, it looks like some pressure from the king here, or on the black king. Um, so let's see how this works, and it looks to me that we've got a combination here. I'm going to play rook to f8 check, um, rook to f8 check, and after he takes here, which is forced, I have a discovered attack. So let's see if that works. Okay, that is correct. And then discovery uh, can block only here, and that should be checkmate. So uh, that is the uh, first problem. Uh, if you can see, I've just cropped out the board, um, but I... Uh, uh, we'll go on to the next problem. Let's just work on these for like uh, five minutes or so. Let's do a few problems and try to solve them with me if you want. You can pause them on the first uh, viewing. Okay, let's go to the next one. 
Okay, pause it if you want to try to solve it yourself. And uh, here, um, let's see what we've got here. Um, got this battery coming down here. Um, have this knight here. And let's see if there's any way to... I'm looking at this capture. Think there's any type of uh, checkmate necessarily do we have a oh, okay so if we capture this knight it this pawn has to take and then we advance this pawn attacking this bishop which deflects it and after it gets deflected uh, we win this bishop so take here okay I advance it and that's it okay because after he takes then I am going to um, take here on d7. Okay, Okay. here we are in the next problem. Let's try to solve this. And again, you can pause it if you want to do it yourself. So, um, what do we have here? We have, uh, I'm already seeing some pressure here on uh, g2. And I, I also see here that we have um, this pawn. Of course, I'd love to play something like c4, and of course, if he takes it, I have checkmate there. Uh, but what else can we do? Uh, do we have moves here like uh, F3? And see, because here, this, I'm wondering if we have a um, position where this bishop, this queen could get overloaded. If I play F3, threatening the queen, if the queen moves, say, here to protect g2 then i can go ahead and take this bishop um because i don't think any c uh, i'm sorry f5 is too slow i think i think uh something like f5 um white has time to say play f3 i don't know if that'd be the best response but he can defend this pretty easily um i think f3 is the answer let's try it okay so he takes here and uh, this is where the threat of the checkmate is not going to end up in checkmate, but I am going to win material. Okay, so I hope you guys got that. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, and I'm noticing some interesting themes here. Uh, we've got here, see, we've got this bishop here again. So I'm wondering if there's going to be, I already see the combination. Uh, this is one I'm very familiar with. So we are going to take this bishop pinning this queen of course the queen is going to take and then we're going to fork the king and the queen here so let's try that and then here and then here okay uh just in case let's just go back real quick so you see that uh queen takes here so that's going to deflect this queen here and it's going to put him right in position for that fork okay takes takes and a knight to e3 check King moves out of the way, and then we grab that, ending up winning a bishop. Okay, let's do one more, and then we'll finish up for today. Okay, here um, is another deflection problem, okay, uh, already. So we see here that the king is protecting both this rook and this knight, so it is overworked. So we're going to take this knight, because we can't take the rook, because our king can't uh, put itself in check. We're going to take this knight. And the king takes, moving away from this rook. Now, uh, in a game, or, or if you didn't know that the if this wasn't a tactical problem, you just want to make sure you're not going to get checkmated in here somewhere because you're bringing your king in. But I do know that that is the answer here. Okay? So uh, that's it for that. Um, so far, so good. I enjoyed these problems. They're very interesting. Uh, I'm going to keep working on this through the week try to move um, systematically through it. The course itself, in the introduction, he discusses that he you should do it all in a, a period of time, say four weeks, he suggests, and then the next time do it in two weeks. And the idea there uh, is uh, kind of was brought up by another author, uh, Michael Delamaza. Several years ago, he wrote a book called Rapid Chess Improvement, and he has this thing he calls the seven circles. But it's the same concept is that you take a progressive set of problems 
and then you repeat them over and over. Um, I think that will definitely improve your play if you were to do it that way. Uh, the thing, though, here is that it's kind of on steroids with the, if you were to actually use the chessable system, because what chessable will do is on a daily basis will bring back certain items to improve. So it's drilling you while, uh, before you totally forget it. And the, the beauty of that is that, and again, we'll make a video maybe on spaced repetition learning, is that if you wait too long between the first time you see it and the second time, you would have forgotten it and it's as if you're solving it again. Whereas uh, Chessable, like these problems will probably come up for me in either several hours or tomorrow and I'll review them again. But obviously I'll be moving more from memory rather than from solving them uh, from scratch. And you can even see here, because I've uh, been doing tactics for a while, that some of these problems, the patterns already came out. And by doing the whole system this way, going through all the problems, I think the goal will be to have uh, just increase that store of tactical patterns that are uh, in your head. Now, uh, with that in mind, you, I, you can already see I, I like the method of training here, both uh, within the book as well as uh, on the Chessable platform. Uh, so I guess part of my questions for this review, uh, for these series of videos, is the selection of the positions and also to identify the appropriate level that I think that maybe you should uh, should tackle this particular book. So uh, we'll get a few more problems next week. I'm going to mainly focus uh, today. We sort of introduced the book. Um, I'm just going to do maybe a 15 minute, 10, 15 minute session where I'm just solving the problems. Uh, you can look at it too as a, a training video so you can train along with me. But uh, the idea is with this type of thing is that if you want to get the full effect of the training, uh, these aren't just random problems, at least uh, it doesn't seem that they are. It seems that they are, they are um, arranged in a certain order. So being able to solve them in the correct order uh, will be part of the training and its desired effect. Okay, so uh, let's uh, close for today. And I hope you'll follow me next week. Again, we're going to just do a 10-minute, 15-minute video of uh, doing more of the problems. Of course, I will explain the solutions too. So if you are new to tactics or uh, I hope to be able to teach you something as well. Okay, hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please press the like button. And let me know what you think about my plans on doing a, a sort of a three-part review. Uh, I will put a link in the description if you just want to go ahead and check it out yourself. Um, but... I also want to, uh, I think this is a great way to review things, especially like a tactics book, because uh, we all know that training tactics is important, uh, but the material and the way we do it also can help accelerate our, our learning process and our skill so that we can apply those skills to the chessboard. Uh, and if you're new to this channel, Better Chess Training is about helping you improve your chess, uh, really uh, make you the hero of your own chess story, okay? And uh, that's my goal uh, here. I'm on this journey with you, and uh, I do this through uh, analyzing games and showing you instructive games, also uh, teaching and sharing uh, training techniques uh, based on science and experience that will help you to improve as effectively and efficiently as possible. So if that's something you're interested in, then uh, please consider subscribing, and I hope to see you in a future video.